You know, the bush here in the landscape here is very full on. Yeah. It's dangerous, um, especially if you don't look after it. And the rainforests are beautiful, but they're intense and they're wild and they're kind of, who do you think you are, little person? We are here with Julia Zamira, host of SBS's new Great Australian Walks with Julia Zamira. Mm. Julia Zamira, how are you? I'm really well, Michaela. <laughs> how are you? I'm great, thank you. <laughs> look. Let's just jump straight into it. Let's. It's a great show. And I want to know, what was the inspiration behind the series and what can viewers expect to see? So this is the first new show I've done since COVID. And when they asked me if I would be interested in hosting it, I thought, post-COVID, what a great idea to get outside, basically. Yes. So to be outside walking, to me, felt very appealing. I'm a natural walker. I didn't start driving till I was 35, Michaela. I didn't get my licence till I was nearly 30 as well. Hold me. I love it. <laughs> that is so great. Is it, why? Yeah. Why did you not? I was, I was scared. I built myself up into a love hole. It. So I'd started, and then I would stop, and then I would take ages, and then... Oh, I'm sorry, this feels like you're interviewing me no, now. No, it's the same. <laughs> yeah. It was the same. Yeah. So it's I walked me. everywhere. Yeah, walked everywhere. Yeah. Public transport girl, all that. Yeah. So basically, we don't shy away from the fact that this is a show we're making after COVID, and we include it. And by that I mean, I feel like people discovered walking during COVID, as we know. Absolutely, because it was one of the only things yeah. you could do to get outside. Yeah, five kilometre radius, your hour. And I genuinely think some people just hadn't walked in forever. Mm -hmm. And when they found that it was the one thing they could do, they re-engaged with something I think quite primal. And I have a friend called Jane Tuttle, she's a writer, and she says, when you walk you see, and it's true. And so that notion of what's in your backyard, what can you find, and then of course during COVID once borders were closed for all the right reasons to the rest of the world. Um, people went, well, if I can't go overseas, where else can I go within the country to have a bit of a visit? And uh, we thought that was a great thing to highlight. Absolutely. And obviously you, you saw a lot of different landscapes and Australia is known for its diverse landscapes. Can you give us a, like a little sneak peek into some of the, the places that you went and the breathtaking sort of landscapes that you saw? Well, there's formidable landscapes and worlds like Dorigo National Park mm. in New South Wales. And I'm embarrassed to say, and I say it in the show, that I'd never really been in a rainforest before. Not really. That felt the furthest away from the world possible. And that was quite a moving show and quite a... Uh, it's kind of a sock, sort of kind of knock me out kind of thing, I have to say. Um, and then we go to something man-made, like Lake Burley Griffin. And what's beautiful about that walk is that you really can start in the bush, which we do, and then go on this circuit that takes you by the art gallery, that takes you past museums, that takes you along the beauty of the water and whatever's happening on the water to the Carillion where the bells ring, past Old Parliament House and you can go to the Tent Embassy and uh, that was a really accessible walk. So it's a mixture of those things. What were some of sort of the most interesting people that you got to meet or, yeah. or who was someone who, who taught you something that you didn't know about? So I would say the people I connected with the most were immigrants. Yeah. So yeah, Irina Berezina is a chess master. She is from Ukraine, but she's been living in Australia for many years. She came here when her baby was young, just after Chernobyl. Uh, they were wanting to get away and Australia was an option. Um, but she's won for Australia five times, international champion. And she moved straight to Bondi. That was where she happened to go. We met her on the Bondi walk. But she uses walking as thinking time, as chess time, working out her moves, um, and also thinking of her brother, who is still in Kiev, um, who has been to Bondi many times, to Australia many times. She says, I think he knows this place better than I do. And um, she tells a great story of him. Um, he's got all these photos and films of the place. And because he can't come out here just yet, he watches the films and looks at the photos and puts his feet in a warm bucket of water to feel like he's by the water and, and warms himself up in winter. I know. Oh, that's and really sweet. I know, so I loved meeting Arena. And yeah, I've always kind of, I would say, you, you, you connect with the things that you know. Immigrant stories is what I know, because whilst I didn't escape any danger, my mum's Australian, my dad's French, I was born in France and we came here. Um, I will always very much 
identify with that that kind of immigrant story. Yeah. And there's a lot of beautiful reflecting uh, that comes from different places that you explore. What, was there anything sort of you, by doing all that reflecting, did you learn anything new about your family or yourself, or, or, or what was it like to have that time and reflect in that way? Well, I think part of the reflecting is what walking does. Yeah. So walking does that. It's like, you know, it's not about conquering. It's not about climbing that hill necessarily. It's the actual, I know we always say it's the journey, but is the process of doing it. And, well, look, I don't know about you, but during COVID, I got a glimpse of what retirement's like because we couldn't get out. And I thought, well, if this is what being, if this is what, you know, my 82 year old mum also experiences where she wants to go out more, but she physically can't sometimes, you know, you owe it to yourself to get out there and do it. And so part of that reflecting was that too, going, I've only got 20 summers left to live. You know what I mean? You kind of go, I mean, your time's limited. So what are you going to do with it kind of thing? Yeah. But I think the reflecting and the walking I don't know, maybe I was thinking, did my dad find what he wanted here? Do, do immigrants find what they need and want? Do they understand that in their escape, they're also landing somewhere where the first peoples of this country uh, were robbed of so much? Um, how do we connect into that? And um, I think my dad did find a better life here. There is a freedom here. But I often think about, and I did reflect on, what if we'd stayed in France and what would the other life had been like? And I think when you're an immigrant, you're always in that space. Absolutely. You know, you're always stuck, maybe, between that other place and where you are and you feel a bit at home in both and completely foreign in both. Do you feel more connected with Australia and our landscape through this series? Well, interestingly, I don't. Oh. I, and I, think, I don't think it's a bad thing. Yeah. I don't think it's a bad thing. I don't feel like, I felt like, I feel like, you know, we're actually quite insignificant really. And yet we've made so much damage to, we've done so much damage to the planet. So I felt like, I really, there were moments, and I've often thought this, because my pet, my mum's family's from Queensland. I'd go there as a kid and it was so hot. Yes. And so sort of full on. Maybe I'm more French. Maybe I need to be back there maybe that's my world so for me it made me more um i suppose it made me more aware of the grandeur of the world versus you and that nature will always kind of obliterate you if you're not careful so work with it you know yeah um but i can't say i can't say i felt like i still belong in it and then to also with sbs what is great with sbs and i'm literally not blowing smoke but I, and what is great is that they allowed us in the edit to keep in the negative, mm. to keep in the fact that there are massacre sites and sorry places, to keep the fact in that we need to work harder, to keep the fact in that um, this stuff doesn't happen magically. I think this walk made me realise no matter where you go, no matter what you look at, you can't unsee the fact that this was a very fruitful, happy place. Yes. And uh, and, and, and we, we, we kind of uh, ruined that. Absolutely. But what I like about the show is, you're right, it doesn't steer away from anything. It's not just like, oh, beautiful war. Yeah. It's really, the his, there's history there that we all need to learn and keep learning about. And it doesn't shy away from that. And I think that's what makes it a really interesting walking show, you know. With, with all due respect, I did say to them, it can't be getaway. You know, yeah. I'm not here to yeah. do getaway because I, I can't, I'm done with going, oh, we'll just say it's great. It all went fine, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so thank you. Merci, SBS. Come back. <laughs> Very good. Come thank you. Do you think the show will inspire people to get out and walk? Or is that a hope from it? Or what do you think? Um, two things. I hope it inspires people who can't get out. Yes. To just, it just enjoy it as a program, right? So we were a very tiny crew. We had two cameras and a drone. Um, beautiful, incredible crew. Mm. And I know drones get used a lot now and it's nothing new, but the show has a very slow quality to it, a meditative quality to it. And I hope that people who can't get out for whatever reason enjoy a little bit of that, get yeah. to have that experience. But in terms of getting people out there to walk, wow, well, I don't know. Do you feel like the people who rediscovered walking during COVID now have just gone on back in the car? I don't know. 
I don't know. Yeah. I can't answer that. I yeah, guess. I know. See, so I'm like, well, hopefully it will encourage people to walk, but hopefully it will also encourage you to not use the car. And as I say often in the show, everything's in walking distance if, you, if you're prepared to make the time. And again, it's not a show about conquering a mountain or going backpacking for three days and camping even. It's just saying how far could you go and what could you explore around you on, on a pretty easy level um, just to do something different and, and, and challenge yourself a little bit. Yeah. Mm. And I hope people who are living in the areas that you, you went on these walks mm. sort of see that mm. and just inspires them to get out. Mm. Love it. Fingers crossed. Yeah.